Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, March 6th, 2022. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast, Vegetarian Length, episode number uh, uh, 638. And because you somebody bitch. decided to <laughs> look, <laughs> I didn't get the dun dun. I was expecting to get the dun dun. I didn't, I didn't get the dun dun. David gets the dun dun. Oh, oh, because oh, probably back. Back I back see how it is. It's, it's, I see how it is. It, in, in the end, this was all Owen's idea. <laughs> uh-huh. I am dead. I am deceased. I was not expecting that. <laughs> there was a reason why I actually uh, actually went and searched for that and pulled it up. Well, thank thank you, Jeff. And I thank you, Owen. Back to that well, to come later, but that was that was good. That was good. Well, it's still available, just you know. It, the button's still there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in any case we tried this two weeks ago when damon was out but uh due to technical difficulties we couldn't do this uh but so this time damon can join us it's great yeah excellent and with that uh, gary what the hell are we talking about i'm already confused that's okay um well we needed that levity that um humor at the beginning of this because this is a very fucking serious topic. Um, so the title. <laughs> it's the new fart machine, people. Get ready. Um, so this episode is called Earn It Act 2022. For those of you that are not in the United States, maybe be blessed that you're not here at this moment because of what we're discussing. This is a very political mm -hmm. show. Um, and by political, it, we're going to talk about legislation. So remember back to col 459 we did a show called fosta impact that's f-o-s-t-a not to be confused with the beverage shasta whole different thing or fago yeah so um the thing is is that uh back in 2018 we had this legislation that ended up getting presented called fosta which was Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act. And it actually went hand in hand with another one called SESTA, which was the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act. So it was known as the FOSTA SESTA or SESTA FOSTA, depending on how you looked at it. No, um, and at the Shasta. That... <laughs> right. Um, and not to be confused with Fanta. So uh -huh. even if you want to, want to. You wanna, you wanna, Fanta. <laughs> We're in such a mood tonight. So. Yeah. Here's the thing, and, and, and weirdly, so here's the crazy thing. Four years ago, March 27, 2018, is when we posted COL 459 talking about FOSTA and its impact. Because if you recall, we used to do a subject or a segment called Love on Craigslist, and we used to read what we thought were the most winningest, bad uh, Craigslist postings for people to hook up. And the thing is, is that the landscape fastly changed because of this legislation. The adult section of Craigslist completely went away. Um, and a lot of websites, apps, like these things were affected by these concepts. Yeah. Fast forward to 2021, I want to say. Um, 
and we get uh, Miss Lady Graham, aka Lindsay Olin Graham, aka Keebler Elf, aka uh, you know closeted politician potentially from some call him the lady i don't yeah oh yeah in in certain uh gay circles she's known as the lady graham because rumor has it she had a grinder profile oh yes oh yes some tea you can sip all the tea you want so here's the thing is uh lady graham has presented uh for the u.s senate this um lovely uh, thing and so I'm referring it to as, as the cousin, the newborn cousin of uh, Fosta Sesta, and we have what's called the Earn It Act of 2022, um, and it stands for the Eliminating Abusive and Rampant Negligent of Interactive Technologies Act. Wow, that's the short title. The long title is to establish a national commission on online child sex exploitation prevention. And for other purposes. Interesting. Pay attention to that last little part. And for other purposes. purposes. Correct. Um, These will affect the Communications Act of 1934 and the Communications Decency Act. Um, So not to get into the weeds about this, but basically uh, we got trouble right here in River City. People. Mm -hmm. Um. These acts have done nothing to actually make an impact on child uh, exploitation, child pornography, like these things that they are stating as to what their their issues are. So um, it we're going to post to to the website a lot of stuff. Uh, we're not going to get into all of it, but basically I've included the 2020 previous version that did not go anywhere. Um, And part Mm. of that was because there was a lot of outcry about it at the time. Mm. Um, And so the ACLU actually had put out a letter at that time to the senators. There was a House version. There was also a Senate version. Um, There's going to be a link to an Engadget article. This is all, I don't want to say vintage, but from 2020. There's also going to be Wikipedia links to um, FOSTA, SESTA, and the Earn It Act. So you can read up on these things. Um, but then we get to the new 2022 version, um, and I've got links to the Senate and the House versions if you literally want to read the legalese of what these things are. Um, so the ACLU um, and other folks have kind of made comments about this. Um, so the concept of this new bill is that it revises the federal framework governing the prevention of online sexual exploitation of children. Mm. Sounds good on the surface. Yes. Um, it always just, sounds good on the surface. Right. It's kind of like, you know, uh, looking at, you know, a profile and seeing the pictures or reading the demo. All sounds good. Mm-hmm. Um, additionally, this bill will limit the liability protections of interactive computer service providers with respect to claims alleging violations of child sexual exploitation laws. Mm. Keep that in mind. So the bill replaces various statutory references of child pornography and material that contains child pornography with the phrase child sexual abuse material. Doll. I I find that personally problematic. I mean, already the wording is kind of problematic, but now they're broadening the scope to child sex abuse material. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's been clearly defined um, as to what that principally will be. Um, So the, the, the high level is the bill makes changes to the reporting requirements for electronic communication service providers and remote computing service providers who report apparent instances of crimes that involve sexual exploitation of children. Um, Among the changes, the bill requires providers to report facts and circumstances sufficient to identify and locate each minor and each involved individual. Um, The bill also increases the amount of time that providers must uh, preserve the contents of for the report. So all of that sounds great. Um, Mm, I don't want (laughs) to say it sounds all great. Let me just... I know you're kind of jumping into it, but it, it doesn't sound great. And I'm sure 
like the articles and stuff are kind of pointing out to this, but it's getting very dicey. Mm -hmm. It's falling into a very nebulous moment that I'm already, like in my head, I'm sitting here thinking, you're having this, um, uh, this moment of where like, oh my God, like this is coming, becoming something a little bit more, potentially more threatening than it is. Mm -hmm. Like it's very much kind of falling down that line. Right. And and so in this, um, the ACLU has already put a joint coalition letter together that was delivered on February 9th. That's that's kind of why I wanted to discuss this sooner than later, because um, it's it's in action at the moment, but it is not um, up for a vote. So if you are um, in the U.S., I really hope that you um, have continued to listen uh, or, or watch. And then um, when we have the links in that, you can go online because there's a petition, um, those kind of things. But in the ACLU's letter, this is just a, a portion of it. it. It's more extensive, but um, for the copy paste purposes, it says, looking to the past as prelude to the future, the only time that Congress has limited section 230 protections was in the allow states and victims to fight online sex trafficking act of 2017. Hence, Sesta Fosta, we talked about earlier. That law purported to protect victims of sex trafficking by eliminating providers' Section 230 liability shield for, quote unquote, facilitating sex trafficking by users. According to a 2021 study by the US Government Accountability Office, however, the law has been rarely used to combat sex trafficking. And then there's a, a source reference. Instead, it has for sex workers, whether voluntarily engaging in sex work or forced into sex trafficking against their will, offline and into harm's way. Mm -hmm. There's another source for that reference. It has also chilled their online expression generally, including the sharing of health and safety information and speech wholly unrelated to sex work, which mm -hmm. also has a source. Moreover, these burdens fell most heavily on smaller platforms that either served as allies and created spaces for the LGBTQ and sex worker communities, or simply could not withstand the legal risk and compliance costs of SESTA-FOSTA. Congress risks repeating this mistake by rushing to pass the misguided legislation, which also limits the Section 230 protections. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. Mm -hmm. um, it's a where we 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 try to throw a blanket on a fire in a sense. This is a big like I we all want to protect, you know, anyone who is being forced into sex trafficking, sex work, what have you. But this kind of blanket statement and blanket overall kind of ac action does nothing to help those who are in danger mm -hmm. and it also allows those who were not in danger for lack of a better phrase you know who are doing it legitimately mm -hmm. it, it it pushes them out of an ability and a way to do it safely you know right. like this talks about the article the you know sites that were you know supportive and trying to help these people uh, not help, but allow these people to do these things above board, safely, um, with um, abilities to quote unquote protect themselves in mind. And now they have to abandon ship and find a new way, but there's not really a new way out there. There's not something out there that can truly help. And they're kind of stuck in this limbo mm -hmm. and more than likely will have to go back out into the real, the world and kind of do this work, you know, on the street, what have you, you know, potentially putting themselves in further danger. Right. That's not okay. Cause there's nothing there to protect them. Right. Yeah. It's, um, it's significantly problematic. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know what else there is that you can't uh, say about it. As much as it's meant to do good, I think there's far more concern for the negative consequence, especially yeah. for our community, 
um, in what will come out of that. And um, I'm looking because I thought that I had seen a video. Oh, um, and I'll include this too, actually, now that I think about it. Um, John Oliver on eight, over on HBO has his last week with uh, last week tonight with John Oliver show. And he did an episode on sex work. And I really thought he was going to hammer home about the new Earn It Act. Mm -hmm. um, he does talk about Sesta Fosta. I think it's a good video to watch. It is about 25 minutes, but in it, there's some really telling things about how messed up this is. And because of the last legislative governance issue that came up, now it's harder for the people trying to connect with these communities to prevent these things from happening mm -hmm. to do their actual job because the yeah. platforms went away. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them potentially went to the dark web. Like it's just, yeah. it, it, it's like, while, it, while I understand the intention, the consequences have actually not been positive in mm -hmm. the vast majority of the situation. So it's yeah. like, why, why, are we, why are we amplifying that um, yeah. in this situation? It's rather unfortunate. Um, you know, we know people who are in you no know, sex work business um, in one way, shape, or form, you know, whether they're doing porn for companies or um, um, showing up on OnlyFans and doing their stuff that way, whatever they're doing. Um, and there's a potential that all of that can go away. You know, we've been, we've been, we saw it happen with, um, Tumblr. Um, we saw it kind of happen right. recently with what well, we saw with Kreslix and all that stuff. Um, and now, uh, oh, it just left my head. Where did it go? What was the name? Oh, I mean, the only fans are just for fans. I think one of them recently had a blow up. I think that was more in regards to like credit cards, but it, it, um, yeah, right, it, but it's related to this. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. remember when when we said rest in peace to Tumblr, they were like, Oh, well, we have to really crack down on the adult content. Like we can't be held accountable as a platform for having mm -hmm. like child pornography. So they just yeah. you know, blanket swept like we have to do away with all adult like stuff, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they felt they couldn't take the financial risk of it. And it ties back to the whole financing aspect of how like people support platforms and they put their money out there. And so MasterCard Visa, understandably, you know, these bigger financial bank platforms were like, well, we're not going to be held accountable by the government mm -hmm. for helping mm -hmm. funding these things. So yeah. like, it's just this vicious cycle that like yeah. everything ends up being like, no, 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 not me. Nope. Sorry. Yeah. can't. Can't do that here. Like and and so yeah. ultimately everyone kind of pays the price yeah. in some way or like, form. And we've we've seen it happening like recently. We've talked about XTube, we've talked about Pornhub and all the things that happened with those sites. And right. XTube is no longer a thing. And now in order to to do anything um in regards to providing or creating content on like Pornhub, you have to somehow be verified. And it is at least the last time I checked, I haven't checked it recently um you fall into a cycle of you can't technically be verified because you need photos of yourself on the site to verify yourself but you can't put photos of yourself on the site without being verified yeah it, it's and, it, and we talked about it before how broken that system is that it's it's after the fact like had they built yeah. the platform that way from the beginning they mm -hmm. could have avoided a lot of this um yep. You know, it's it's kind of not different. I mean, like, you know, look at Chatterbait. Chatterbait doesn't really have these problems. Chatterbait has this whole thing. Like, you can you can create an account without sending in any information, but you're not allowed to stream. You're not allowed to be visible. So you're just mm -hmm. kind of lurking, for back of a better way to phrase it, right? But if you want to stream, then you have to send them ID. And you have to do it pretty frequently. I think it's every six months or something. Like you have to consistently update about your information. You're not allowed to have any other persons in the stream with you unless they are also a model on the platform. And that's known ahead of time before the stream. Mm -hmm. So like they've, they've taken things to do as precautions. They also notably use a monetary platform that is not main, one of the main ones. Um, now, it doesn't mean that you can't use MasterCard or Visa. It's just you're not, they're not, you know, they're not directly 
utilizing them as the the sole thing. They have very uh, various options up to and including. I think they just added crypto. Mm. So, you know, I I mean, I think if you if you take it seriously in terms of like what you're providing as a service and an option, then that becomes a whole um, piece of the of the bigger puzzle. But you know, this may not necessarily be a long show because I kind of have a feeling all three of us are on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, so in in the remaining part of the ACLU letter that was sent out this uh, year, they said the Earn It Act jeopardizes the security of our communications. The Earn It Act risks undermining child abuse protections. And the Earn It Act would uh, have devastating consequences for everyone's ability to share and access information online and yeah. to do so in a secure manner. We urge you to oppose this bill. Congress should instead consider more tailored approaches to deal with the real harms of child sex abuse materials online. Yeah. Um, there is a petition um, that is through uh, noearnitact.org. Um, you can go uh, use the website. It says, write to your senators. There's over a half a million, almost 600,000 signers at this point. I did this before Jeff and I were going to record this two weeks ago. Um, it does contact your congressman based off of where you live. I have already gotten um, emails and reply from my congressman. I'm not exactly happy about the email replies that I got <laughs> uh, because I felt like both of my senators were like, we think that this is, you know, a... Um, an approach that makes sense. That's why they signed on to it. Um, you know, and one of the one of the wonky things about this is, um, if I remember correctly, it gives power to, I think, the creation of like a board or an entity to determine um what will take place. if i if I remember correctly, um, I could be wrong. But I was like, um, that's a okay. So um, how how does that how does that work? That's some like what is that like revolutionary government like the kind of like those kind of movie works where like you're in the future and like the 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 government kind of does everything for you and decides what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to wear and all that stuff and becomes that that's the cycle that I feel that this is coming falling down on. You know, if we're going to limit people's abilities to put their, you know, create things and put things online because it might be harmful um, or it might be um, child or sexual abuse. Um, when does it stop and how are you verifying it? What are right. you doing to, to, to verify that this is legitimate or just, you know, this is, you know, actual, you know, negative, you know, content. And if you can't figure out a way to do that, then why are you doing it? Right, right. So the, I was the innocent still the... proving guilty part that yeah. we need to focus on. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, if somebody suspects that this person is, they there should be an investigation in regards to it first. And then once the investigation is concluded, they'll be able to take action. But they need to investigate mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Right. So um, in a statement following the Senate Judiciary Committee's unanimous passage of the bill, Lady Graham praised the bipartisanship against it, uh, saying, quote, against the, quote, scourge of se child sexual abuse material and the exploitation of children on the Internet, end quote. Further, he asserted that the social media companies and Internet service providers would be able to defend themselves in a civil suit as long as they employ, quote, unquote, the best practices. Which I think what are is the best practices? right. Um, Wyden uh, was critical of the bill, calling it a quote a transparent and deeply cynical effort by a few well-connected corporations and the Trump administration to use child sex abuse to their political advantage. The impact to free speech and security and privacy of every single American be damned. End quote. Mm. And that's kind of my, again that's kind of my issue with this whole thing. Like it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Right. It's just not going to. So here's, this is from 2020, but like this still exists as a concern. Opponents of the Earn It Act re recognized 
that some of the quote unquote best practices would most likely include a backdoor for law enforcement into any encryption used on a site, in addition to the dismantling of Section 230's approach based on commentary made by members of federal agencies that would be placed on this commission. It's the commission I was talking about earlier that would um, handle this, these cases. Um, and I, sorry, I lost my place in what I was looking at. Um, for example, former Attorney General Barr has extensively argued that the use of end-to-end -end encryption by online services can obstruct investigations by law enforcement, especially those involving child exploitation, and have pushed for a government backdoor into encryption services. Oh, my God. The senators behind the Earn It Act have stated that there is no intent to bring any such encryption backdoors with this legislation. However, according to the Washington Post, Richard Blumenthal said that, quote, lawmakers wouldn't offer a blanket exemption to using encryption as evidence, arguing companies might use it as a, quote unquote, get out of jail free card, end quote. Mm. So I think there's definitely like difference of opinions about this, but this kind of goes back to what. Um, one specific manufacturing um, conglomerate platform, Apple, um, Tim Cook has been pretty much stalwart in carrying forward this concept of your information on your device is yours and it is to be protected that way. Um, and so I, I think it's very interesting that there's potential that people could see this could be opening the door to giving the government the ability to override um, what we presume is a legal right to our privacy and well I, I and also it. security con concerns in regards to that because I, and right i'm sure i believe tim cook even brought this up in regards to encryption is if there is if a backdoor exists mm -hmm. hackers will find it Right. And, and I, it gets really murky because I don't want people to lose sight of what I think this is really about, that there are um, ill intent people mm -hmm. in American, in U.S. and human society that are doing really heinous things. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I'm not against like us doing things to actually address like child abuse, mm -hmm. sex abuse. Um, mm -hmm. those things are legitimately need to be handled. However, this legislative stuff seems a bit hyperbole to me and the potential yeah. impact, what comes out of it is more the disconcerting part, especially since we've already seen what came from 2018's, um, FOSTA SESTA, you know, stuff that basically, um, I mean, it really had a, a detrimental effect. And I still don't think we've seen the end of, of that from four years ago, let alone something new being introduced. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking. So, yeah, as of uh, February 2022, 60 privacy and human rights groups did send a letter to lawmakers basically opposing the Internet Act. Um, plus, we have this petition. So um, I think this episode is more kind of an educational like, hey. <laughs> Please take a moment to engage yourself and your your civil uh, potential responsibility to know what's happening and how it could possibly affect you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so there will be a link uh, to con the congressional petition. Um, so I do recommend people kind of look at it. This is To me, this is mostly about putting it on the radar. And then if we have to revisit the topic later, I guess we will. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah, want to. I, yeah, I'd rather. I really. But. So basically what to kind of in my head wrap it up, sorry. Um, this is not good. Um, it has the potential repercussions of hitting and affecting a lot of things that we have grown to low and love. You know, um, we have already seen some of the impact prior to this um, to now, I should say. Mm -hmm. And it could be potentially worse here in the near future if this continues and passes. Um, and the best thing you can do is use your voice if you are against it and, you know, sign those, peti sign this petition, get some information out, try to get someone to listen to you so that they don't, um, do this. <laughs> so this doesn't become a thing. I'd rather right. it not become a thing. If it's, if it is already a thing, I mean, we had Sesta Foster, um, Sesta Foster. 
Um, if it does become a thing, like just you know, what's going to come next? You'll probably have to sign a big ass waiver just to use your XT. Well, no, not XT. Just to use like your um, Chatterbait or um, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. It, the, the intent, the original like title and everything is all good. Yeah. The actual details and implementation that they're shooting for is where things come become prop problematic. They need to focus on these specific things and also think of, okay, how does our implementation might affect other things that are perfectly yeah. fine. Um, and and if even if it's something you don't necessarily like but is not illegal, um, you need to make sure that get, that you work around that and try to find the implementation. Oh, it's really about the, the implementation than the intent. And if they're trying to block all these other things, it's awful that they're trying to use something that is awful as an excuse for trying to break something that is perfectly good well and and so here's the the i think the 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 thing that's buried in the center of all this that's a, a, that the problem is so we kept talking about section 230 and that's a part of the communications act of 1934 like something almost like 90 years old that section allows operators of websites to remove user posted content that they deem inappropriate and provides them with immunity from civil lawsuits related to such a posting. The reason why 230 is so important is because Craigslist could have things that were posted, take it down and not be held legally responsible for the posting being there originally. Mm -hmm. Like, does mm -hmm. that make sense? Like they, like yeah. they could catch it and be like, Oh, hell no. Uh -huh. like, yeah, it's it's they're the platform that people are using, but it's the people's that are the user's responsibility to be posting something that's good or not. Yeah. So right. if and ultimately, is... right, that's where the the legality would lie. It makes sense to me that you might want to go for the platform and hold them accountable, but the reality is the platform can't be held accountable to everything. And so think about it this way. Like this is sort of the weirdness we have going on with like social media platforms, you know, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube, like they, they are all theoretically being held accountable for the content that is posted, but they have for many, many, many years been like, no, 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 we can't be held accountable to that. Like we provide them with a platform and we monitor it. But they are ultimately responsible for that content. Hence, all these things that have changed over the years. Like for us, whether or not there's mm -hmm. a maturity, like, you know, whether or not this is meant for children, what are, you know, um, and we've got this whole other issue we've not even really talked about. Um, but what's the safe word has really hammered on quite a bit about the, um, you know, shadow banning and silencing mm -hmm. of LGBTQ people on these platforms because they don't get monetized. They don't get promoted. Like, even mm -hmm. if you're subscribed, you don't get notified necessarily that this thing has gone up. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's highly problematic that the platforms are, you know, kind of doing these things and they say that they're not, but yet you can, you know, you can easily see it with your own eyes if you're searching and working on it. Um, and it mixes into this whole kind of muddy situation about who is legally responsible for what content on a platform, how it works, um, and so on and so forth. So the the bigger concern is like, what are you really doing about the problem? And so instead, we're going to create a national commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who's going to be on the national commission? Is it going to be a partisan legislators is it going to be people who are beholden to um you know whoever their donors are so you know are we going to leave it are we actually going to put experts of the field on the commission and what will mm. their stuff be so i i you know i i think there's again it goes back to intent is one thing 
the execution is a whole other matter. Yeah. And I think these people have the right intent. This act has the right intent. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, uh, wait. Uh, uh, think of think of the authors. Like if <laughs> Lindsey Graham is one of the authors of this, the it's suspicious. Right yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> it's the the titles of 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 Festa <laughs> Fasta and Earn It. Whoever came it, up with that. It's Who it's knows? like a headline of a clickbait article. It's like, oh, really hey, good way to put it. looking at this, this would be great. But then when you read the details, either like a clickbait article, it's pure bullshit. It, there's just things in it that, okay, your reasoning behind trying to create this act, solid. Based off of the words. Methodology. But the methodology and how you're implementing it doesn't seem to have taken into account how any side effects to the policy. You have to cons consider how this could affect things that are not within the scope in the scope of of your act. It is a fact. This act is crap. I, that's that's trying to continue with rhyming, but no, no. I, I I think here's here's the part I don't like the most. This is the final thing I want to say about this. Really, the bill replaces nearly all instances of the wording "quote child pornography" end quote with "quote child sexual abuse material" end quote, and mm -hmm. I think that sounds very innocent. Mm -hmm. My that question to the two of you is, would two men in a sex act constitute as a child sexual abuse material? Who gets if there to are define two consenting that? adults? No. But, but what if a child <laughs> views it? Uh -huh. Could it potentially be considered abusive Probably. material? Yep. They're, they're opening the door, as it were, to start cracking down on anything that might potentially harm children. That's my concern. Damon, Damon I think, is picking up what I'm putting down. Like, yeah, th no, this I'm, is, I'm this is my, this is where my gut doesn't sit well with this. And no amount yeah. of antacid is going gonna, is gonna to settle it. I think it's disconcerting that it's the it could be cracking open the door to whoever defines sexual mm -hmm. abuse material could be like anything that they deem inappropriate can be considered abusive material for the welfare of children mm -hmm. and that's been used before yeah i don't have examples immediately as facts in front of me but i i'm sorry i'm a child of the 70s and 80s you can't tell me we didn't live through times in which things were considered, you know, um, bad for bad for the children. Uh, I don't even want to start us up on this this topic, but all I'm going to say is uh, the what is it? Satanic panic of the 1980s and the D and D like scene. So <laughs> yeah. it's conservatives yeah. freak out. And they're louder than progressive, so mm -hmm. this is this is where I'm coming from on, on this particular. It's one. not a freaking children. No. All I'm it's saying not. to all I want to say to senators is is don't use these acts to look good. It, it, it passing them when your intent is to to hit other shit with it, which isn't supposed to be hit by this shit. Yep. Bullshit. Hit the nail on the head there, Jeff. Like, that is that is the truth. That is the T. Like, no. Like, don't do this because you think it. you, you have something else that you think you want to get rid of. Get rid of If you really want to get rid of it, then just, you know. Get Come your, out and say it. On. Don't hide it in the Yeah, yeah. Get, put, your, put, your, put your big boy pants on and, and come out and say it. Or... Why don't you make amendments and carve out that LGBTQ platform communities will not be 
targeted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why don't Why don't we modify it? Nice, nice little section of it. this will not be covered. Oh, wait a minute. That's going to be a really, 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 really long list. If you do your research properly. Where's, where's, I guess it really comes down to where's the balance on this, mm-hmm. right? That's so, a big thing. Yeah, yeah. When will it end? Take, is, take more the, time. Stop. Yeah. Research how, how your current wording will affect, affect others that wouldn't necessarily actually be within the scope. Maybe, maybe adjust right. the wording to, to make sure, it make sure the definition of this child sex abuse material, which as far as I can tell is just supposed to be child porn anyways. Right. But that's where I'm like, Hmm. Why and then, and then it's the like, wording? why, like, why are you doing that then? Right. And, and so here's another example. Like, this is what I want people to understand. What if, uh, you know, um, different gendered individuals are in a kink scene and that is recorded and put on a platform mm-hmm. and a child ends up viewing it? Could that meet the legal definition of child abuse sexual material, even though a child's not in it mm-hmm. and it wasn't intended for them? Like that, that's where I'm like, this gets kind of murky for me that you could start stretching this in terms of definition mm-hmm. and application when what it really should come back to is, but why was the child watching it? Mm-hmm. And yeah. who's to say that this is actually because kids these days are smart. They know how to find this shit. Heck back in the nineties, I was finding this shit on the, the, the <laughs> news, use net news groups. Alt.binaries.pictures.erotica.mail. Alt.binaries.pictures.erotica.mail.chubby. Alt.binaries.erotica. Oh, I'm sure it's out there still. No one really uses it anymore. The last post was probably like 2000 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'd wait 20 minutes for a naked picture of a guy. I remember downloading and printing a dot matrix printout of Jack Radcliffe. Oh my God. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Fuck it. Um, but so you know, our, point, think, our point yeah. is, is that yeah. technology has advanced a lot of, there's no reason to uh-huh. think that children wouldn't have also advanced in their skills to get access to things. I mean, the kids are growing they, up on this. Yeah. And it's very quick for them to find it. And Although easier. nowadays with the amount of people who don't have like real computers, it might be a little bit more, more difficult. Have you tried typing on to a, to a tablet? I mean, it's not that easy. I think our kids are better at it than us. Yeah. Children's are. Mm. Absolutely. They know how to text and swipe and what have you. They can type in like long ass sentences in seconds. BBC. Yeah. Why why is the this referring to something that I'm not actually looking for? Mm, let's, 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 no. Um anyway, we ran right off. Our our think we're good, right? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know if there's really anything more that yeah. the two of you want to say about it. No, um, I I think that's it. I think to me this was a, an educative slash call to action. Yeah. Here here's your PSA, so on and so forth. <laughs> Get your shit. Like, click. Please consider clicking through the link, signing the petition, contacting your senators, letting them know I'm not down with this. Look, Ranger Skeen, my right hand is busy doing something else, trying to type with my <laughs> left hand with my iPad on my belly. It's a little difficult. Anyways, let us know what you think. Let us know if uh, you participated in the petition, which, by the way, the generic information that they put on there, I didn't think was quite, quite complete. So fill in fill in more to the, the little note that they put into the, the petition. The um, yeah. But you can also send your comments, what you think about uh, the Internet Act and the bullshit that it's creating. Uh, you can uh, do that by commenting on a blog at CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Uh, leave us a voicemail about it at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. 
uh, or join our entourage chat where you can chat with other people about, about heck anything you want but you can do that at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col you can also find out when we're recording these shows by popping over to our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col uh and you can get various accoutrements uh, such as a comes out lot hat consent is my four play shirt which all of us are wearing in different styles Ta-da! You get those at Zazzle at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And again, if you're in a di- different country, just scroll down to the bottom. There's a way to switch here on like local country. Uh, these designs were designed by Smashy, but you can get more of his his designs over at TeePublic at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron to us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We thank all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Uh, and if you want to send us some cash, you can do that at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on all podcasting platforms at uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. And you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box at Box, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other, as well as WinGem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch uh, on Thursdays, where we play, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, for bears and dragons. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.